Hey friends, it's Taki Dearest. I'm just gonna give a disclaimer right now. This video is going to be going over some pretty disturbing topics and images. So if you guys are sensitive to that stuff, please click away. But for those of you that have clicked on this video for that exact purpose, welcome. This video is going to be going over 10 disturbing images that you were not meant to see. All of these images are in some way, shape or form related to Japan, but I wouldn't say that these are all images that Japan doesn't want people to see. In fact, I would argue that some of these images, I'm sure Japan actually does want the public to see and others, maybe not so much. The real question is, is your life better without seeing some of these? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm sure that many of you, like myself, have been on the internet long enough where at some point your brain is just like, hey, I know that you have school tomorrow and I know that you have to wake up early, but you know what would be really great is if you watch that really disturbing video that will keep you up at night. Or you know that really disturbing image that you saw like years ago? You should go look it up and then you just torture yourself. Why? Because we don't know. I know some people can totally avoid that with their brain and some people like me just give into it and I'm like, you know what? Let me go down this rabbit hole. And that's exactly what I did. So let's get right into it. These are going to be 10 disturbing images that you probably weren't meant to see. Starting off with the first one. <laughs> um, exactly. What the fuck is that? So if you type into Japanese, tokodanbo ga atsugiru, that means when the floor heating is too hot. Just context on what the hell that sentence means. Japanese homes during the winter tend to have a heated flooring that helps warm up the house and it's really convenient but sometimes when the settings are a bit too high the floor gets so hot that you get on like your tiptoes and want to just like hop around the house so that's exactly what this image is which yeah, that would make this image actually a meme. That's exactly what this is. On the Japanese side of the internet, a lot of people know this as just a really funny meme. There's been a lot of parodies of this image. And I just wanted to start this list off with the most lighthearted one because after this, everything else is gonna get disturbing. I just need to break you into it. But I know what a lot of you are thinking. What the fuck is that? So yeah, I, I understand. Uh, when I saw this, I was like, Ugh, I'm not going to bed tonight. But what this actually is, is that this is an image from a French mask theater group called Faustwork. Yeah, so I'm on the website right now and a lot of their performances also involve like contortionists. A lot of it involves just really artsy styles. I guess in this case, for some reason that this photo went really viral on Japanese internet and so people could relate to it just looking at the toes and the first thing people thought of was oh yeah that's what I do when my floor heating is too hot so again I just kind of wanted to start off a little bit more lighthearted because it's gonna get darker from here on out but that's the first image so we're gonna go on to the second one in the second image it's called Japan Airlines flight 123 now looking at it I see that the date in the lower right hand corner says I'm pretty sure that's 85 so that means that this photo was taken in 1985 and it doesn't take a lot to realize that the oxygen masks are out and you can see the flight attendant in the middle also putting a mask over her mouth it actually looks like she's trying to assist one of the passengers this photo has a really disturbing background Background. This is a, literally a photo taken moments before disasters. Almost everyone in this photo is dead. Japan Airlines Flight 123 was a scheduled domestic passenger flight from Tokyo to Osaka. That's really not a long flight at all. I would say that's like an hour or two. On August 12, 1985, the Boeing 747 operating the service suffered a severe structural failure and decompression 12 minutes into the flight. After flying under minimal control for a further 32 minutes, the 747 crashed in the area of Mount Taka Magahara, which is 100 kilometers or 62 miles from Tokyo. And I can see off to the right of this wiki page that there's another image of the plane and under it it says that the stricken jet photographed minutes before the crash the vertical stabilizer is largely missing. I want to know the photographer of what he also thought of this. Oh my god, like the timing of it. And also this image, more importantly, of the Japan Airlines inside of the plane. You're probably wondering, how did this image even come out in public? So that's the question I had. Basically, all it comes down to is that when they were going through the crash, I guess they found a camera and it just miraculously survived the crash and they were able to develop this photo that was taken inside of the plane. So you know what? I go on flights all the time. And to be honest, I don't know why, but it's domestic flights that I'm always the most scared of more than international flights. I don't know what it is. This is like one of my biggest fears. I mean, 
the moment you see that oxygen mask in front of you, it, I'm done. I'm just gonna say my prayers at that point. I have no hope. But you know what's uh, interesting is that there were 524 people in total. That's counting the passengers and the crew. And the fatalities were 520 people. There were four injuries and all of those four injured people survived. That's actually insane. I, I Whenever I think of a plane crash, I just imagine just 100% fatality. I have no idea what any of the survivors have said or if they have said anything. But when I saw this image, I felt my heart go into my stomach. I haven't really seen that many images that are literally taken moments before death. I know this is kind of also a recent like trending thing on TikTok especially that people are starting to make slides of photos moments before disasters and this is actually how I found uh, the image. So going on to the next picture, this one, I have no idea how anyone even got this kind of photo. So this image is of a man named Keith Sapsford jumping out of a flight from Sydney, Australia to Tokyo, Japan. And the story behind it is that he ran away from boarding school and wanted to see the world. And so he hid inside of the wheel and fell to his death. What's even sadder is that he was only 14. God. You know, I understand that people want to see the world and all, but what's stopping you from getting a, like, just saving up for a plane ticket? And hiding in the wheel of the plane, I mean, I really feel for him, but at the same time, it's like, this was so preventable. This is just an insane image to have, like, and it says here that after a couple days on the run from home, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, he arrived at Sydney Airport, and at the time, regulations at major travel hubs were not nearly as strict as they are now. This allowed the team to sneak into the tarmac with ease, noticing a plane prepping for boarding. Sapsford saw his opening and went for it. It was pure happenstance that amateur photographer John Gilpin was at the same place at the same time, and he was simply taking pictures at the airport, hoping one or two would be worthwhile. He didn't know at the time, but he would later capture Sapsford heartbreaking fall on camera. It took a few hours for the plane to depart with Sapsford waiting in the compartment. Ultimately, the aircraft did as planned and took off. And when the plane reopened its wheel compartment to retract its wheels, Keith Sapsford's fate was sealed. He fell 200 feet to his death, hitting the ground below. To make matters worse, all the more tragic, it's unlikely Sapsford would have survived even if he hadn't plummeted to the ground. Yeah, well, I mean, you're already up in the air, so, which it already says here after, but I mean, it's freezing up in the air. I don't know if anyone knows this, but when you look at your window and the windows, like, corners are all frozen, yeah, you're goddamn right it's gonna be freezing. I mean, I would argue he was probably already dead before he even fell out. Not only that, but can you even breathe up there? Like, I'm sorry, but I, I understand that this is like a really tragic death, but just everything. This was a very just avoidable death altogether. Okay, so for these next couple of images, it's only gonna get a little bit more disturbing from here, so let's just go into it. Okay, so the, for this next image, uh, we see a man in front of a hut and it looks like he's in the military. It looks like a pretty tame picture. I'm not sure what that number in the lower left-hand corner means, 614. Don't know what that is, but this man's name is Harold Agnew. Agnew. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying his last name right, but he is actually holding in his hand what seems to be looking like a briefcase or a Lego of some sort. No, that is actually the plutonium core of the bomb that landed on Nagasaki. So this is one of those other disturbing images taken moments before disaster. I looked it up and this man seems to had been a physicist and a very prominent observer in the Hiroshima bombing. It seems that he was probably really used to creating or dealing with bombs that were later going to be used. I would assume that that's probably the reason he's smiling in here. It probably doesn't mean anything to him at this point. And I can't even say that, oh, maybe he was naive to not knowing the repercussions or how massive this was going to be. But I mean, at the end of the day, he was also a physicist, so I'm sure he knew. It's just, I think at that point, especially with America, America just really was focusing on winning or ending this war. Speaking of war, we're gonna go on to our next image right here. I'm sure that there's actually many of you who have seen this. For those of you that haven't seen this image, I'm going to spoil it for you. That's not ink or paint or water on those stairs. Those are shadows 
that are burned into the concrete after the bombing of Hiroshima. I actually haven't been to Hiroshima yet. I've been to about 19 prefectures so far in Japan and Hiroshima is on the list. I've just been waiting for the right time to go. Nowadays, if you go there, it seems that it's definitely faded a lot over time. I even see some other photos of like this girl that's jump roping. I is that real? You know, I actually, if you are into watching some films learning about this war, there's a lot out there, but one of the ones that really hit it with me, um, especially if you like anime, is Barefoot Gen. That is a really tough film to watch. And I know people talk about Grave of the Fireflies as well, but Barefoot Gen, I promise you, really paints out the horrors of what this bomb did. If you guys gonna wanna go watch that, feel free to. But yeah, I feel like if I go to Hiroshima, I might make it more of a personal thing uh, rather than make a video on it. I'm not sure, I haven't really decided, but seeing an image like this definitely makes me wanna go to Hiroshima as my first time going. Something just off camera, I don't even like really wanna share. I wanna be able to really just feel the history of what happened. And if I feel okay, maybe I'll make a video, who knows. We're just going to to save that in the future. Okay, so for our next image, I'm gonna warn you guys, this is probably the most disturbing in this list so far, so far. So this is a Chinese man kneeling about to receive his fate at the hands of this Japanese soldier on the right. And if you've learned about this in school, this is called the Nanking Massacre or the Rape of Nanking. Forgive me if I'm not saying if it's Nanking or Nanjing, I've seen both spellings online. To be honest, in my school, we actually didn't even really touch this topic at all. I actually learned this a lot later in life, uh, just from self-searching. If you look up any images from this time in Japanese history, uh, each and every one is more disturbing than the last. And this one's especially disturbing because you see like this soldier on the right almost looks like he's like smirking at what's going on. Obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna show any images that happen after this. I'm not like I actually looked it up, but it's actually like really horrid of what happened. And I'm not even sure if Japanese schools really even teach this. I mean, I know that in America that we do learn about a lot of wars and some of it is actually filtered a little bit after what I've learned later on in life, so it's hard to say, but if yeah, if you look up any images from the, the Rape of Nunking, uh, just brace yourself because it's one of one of the darkest periods, I think, in Japanese history. All right, so we're gonna go on to the next image. This one. Okay, so I see a bunch of paper plates and there's a bunch of raw meat on there. That ain't just meat, ladies and gentlemen. Those are remnants of a human being. So this photo was taken by a Japanese cannibal named Ise Sagawa. He is infamously known for had murdering brutally a French woman and then eating her body. In fact, he actually, in a really messed up way, there's actually quite a few people in Japan that almost look at him like a celebrity. I know that Vice has a whole video and interview with him. Luckily he's dead now, thank God. Um, but I will say that the my topic on this doesn't end at this video. He actually made a manga that just documented his entire crimes and what he did. And I just happen to have that manga right here. I'm gonna be going over this in a separate video because this thing is wild. I don't even think I can show everything in this manga, but there were only a thousand copies of this made. And so if you guys wanna know my reaction or my thoughts, cause I haven't even looked at that manga yet. I haven't even opened it. So I'm saving that for just my raw reaction later on in the video. But this guy, Issei Sagawa, uh, I think he's known in the top 10 like most notorious or infamous cannibals in history. So if you guys want to look more of this guy up, be my guest because this guy's story is absolutely insane. But as you guys know from this image, this is not meat, that's human body parts. And I'm not even going to tell you which body parts is which, but I know exactly what I'm looking at here. And once you figure it out, you're probably not going to be able to sleep tonight. So. I'm, just, I'm actually trying to get myself together right now because it's like 1 a.m. at the moment and I'm looking at disturbing images. Why am I doing this to myself? Because I procrastinated really badly. We have a couple more images here. Let's just keep going. Okay, so this next one, we have a family outside of a home in Seattle, Washington. If you look closely, 
it says, no Japs wanted. And it actually says it twice. This one on the right says, no Japs wanted here. And this family of four, we ha we see two children. Um, the woman is looking inside of the house and the man seems to be oddly smiling at the camera. So this family is just coming back from a relocation camp in Idaho in America. This is a part of American history that to be honest, I didn't really learn in history. Now, I paid attention in history class. I loved history and I, don't really remember us touching upon Americans involvement in what they did to Japanese citizens. All I know is that at the time the president had approved of this kind of behavior where we sent Japanese Americans to essentially concentration camps in America in order to avoid espionage or spies during World War II. World War II was a moment that I'm sure everyone in the world thought that the world was going to end at any moment. You know, you have families like this who were already persecuted and then when they come back, they don't even come back to a home. It's been vandalized and so they're going through extreme racism. I feel, I don't know, maybe I just got unlucky with my schools growing up but i honestly did not learn much about this till later on in life and i can't help but feel that maybe that was on purpose sometimes i do feel like that history is taught from the perspective of the person who's telling it or the country that's telling it because i do feel like there's a lot of things in history that every country doesn't know about themselves. I did hear about this event from friends uh, as I was growing up, but it didn't really like sink in because we never studied it. I didn't study it. Um, but when I see images like this now, it just makes me think of just how terrible of a time it must have been to live in this kind of situation. Okay, so for this next image, we have what is called the Standing Boy of Nagasaki. This is a very famous photo and it has been shown multiple times in Japan and in multiple multiple forms of media because it is such a powerful image taken during the war. So the story behind this, if you haven't heard, it is a photo taken by an American soldier who caught this Japanese boy in a crematory, which is a place to cremate, carrying his dead brother on his back. And it's said that he stood there for hours, biting his lip until it bled. He said nothing, he did nothing. And according to the American soldier, he just walked away. And years and years later, after this photo uh, came out to the public, there were many investigations trying to identify the boy in this photo, but to no avail. No one knows the identity of the boy in this picture, but I do know that this photo is very famous because it is so powerful depicting of just this one single moment and just like a byproduct of the war during that time. By the way, this is the last war photo uh, that I think I'm going to be showing uh, as far as I'm concerned. So I just thought that this was just one of those images that really burned into my brain. I remember I saw this actually back in high school in my Japanese class. Uh, we were learning about this and I never forgot it. Uh, once you, It's one of those pictures where I feel like once you've seen it, once you've lit it like really sink in, you can never forget it. I don't even think it's really important to find the identity of this boy. I feel that everything always has a reason and I think the message says everything. Okay, so for the next photo, we have this one. This is a family of three. We have a husband on the left and the wife on the right and their baby crying in the middle. It seems like a normal family photo, but unfortunately, this photo actually has a really sad and disturbing background story. So if you guys actually know my Detective Aki series, there's one video in there called The Worst Cult in Japan. And I'm gonna give you the TLDR. This photo basically showed up in that video because this photo is tied in with the story of one of the worst cults in Japanese history called Om Shinrikyo. Again, just gonna give you the TLDR. There was a really bad cult. They were getting a lot of influence and power in Japan. Then here comes this guy on the left. By the way, we're going to call this uh, the Sakamoto family. Mr. Sakamoto here was a lawyer and he set out to expose this cult and by doing so he ended up pissing off a lot of the leaders of this cult so what they did is that they set out to actually murder not only the husband but his entire family not only that but they actually also separated all of their bodies throughout Japan. It wasn't until after the cult attacking the subway system that the family was found and yes including the baby but they were given a proper burial and every year in order f to pay respects to the Sakamoto family, especially to the husband, for trying to help 
the victims in this case. There are people that do visit their grave regularly and to just pay respects to them. But this is one of those images where when you see it, uh, it is very heartbreaking. If you go on Google and type in Sakamoto family murder, you will find this image most likely. And it's just a really heartbreaking story. Okay, one more image to go. I wouldn't say that this picture is necessarily as disturbing as what we've seen before, but I will say that it's just more heartbreaking in my opinion. So we're gonna show it up right now. Okay, so this is a photo of two women. Um, we have one that seems to be behind a glass of some sort. She's wiped off the condensation to speak to what looks like a relative. I'm gonna assume her mother. This photo was taken on March 14th, 2011. If March 2011 rings a bell in terms of Japan, we all know that that is the famous earthquake slash tsunami that hit. So what we are actually witnessing here is a mother trying to talk to her daughter through the glass who's been isolated for signs of radiation after evacuating from the vicinity in the Fukushima nuclear plants on March 2011. And it wasn't just this situation. There were multiple people around that area who were said to be contaminated with radiation. So for a good while, they had to actually be isolated from their families. And this is just a really famous photo that was taken during that time. Again, I wouldn't really call it disturbing. It's just more heartbreaking than anything. And it's just one of those images that really sets in you to never forget get uh, moments like this. But that was all of the disturbing images that I have to show here. Let me know of which one stuck out to you the most. A lot of these images probably was better off without me seeing, but some of these images actually help remind me of certain points in history that shouldn't be forgotten. So we have that going for us, but I do feel like I do want to do this again. It's just going to take a lot of digging and a lot of my sanity back to do this. Wish me luck of trying to sleep tonight for some of these images. But if you guys also have any pictures or images that you guys think that I should also show for future videos, let me know. But I appreciate you guys for watching and subscribe to my channel for more content and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!